Welcome back. Well, the energy transition, as we know, is not free. It will come at a price, particularly for poorer nations on our continent. Africa accounts only for 6% of the world's emissions, yet we're under pressure to decarbonize. Let's talk more about funding for the transition from, from fossil fuels. Marie-Francois Marinelli is the World Bank's country director for South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, Lesotho and Eswatini. Ma'am, good evening to you and thank you for your time on The Pulse tonight. The World Bank has suggested that we can have a just transition and be climate resilient in South Africa. How would you suggest we go around doing that? How can it be possible? So we, we, we have a different view of uh, how South Africa can meet uh, its climate and development goals. And our assessment is first that um, it is possible for South Africa to achieve um, this objective by 2050 uh, by embracing three transitions. So one is the decarbonization transition. So essentially moving away from high intensity uh, energy, high carbon intensity energy. The second is to uh, adopt uh, resilient, basically the adaptation, given the circumstance of South Africa of um, drought, flood, and we have seen what happened in Durban a, a few months ago. And the third one, which is basically the interplay of the two other, is it has to be people-centered, as actually uh, South Africa defined it, because precisely uh, what our analysis shows is that the most vulnerable, the poorest, are the ones that are going to be most likely affected. So we do think that uh, this is possible, and that is the trajectory that we are proposing. It will obviously require capital, financing, uh, money. Um, we, do we have the resources? Does South Africa have the resources to do it ourselves, or do we need help? Yeah, obviously, uh, this is an important agenda, and our assessment is that uh, between now and 2050, that would require about 8.5 trillion rands. And if we look at the period between now and 2030, which is an interim target, uh, it will still require 2.4 trillion rands. And the government itself uh, designed an implementation plan for the just energy transition that shows that uh, it needs about 1.4 five trillion rand in the next five years. So there is consistency of the numbers over the period. Obviously, uh, that will require mobilizing various sources of financing. And firstly, I think that um, South Africa will have to mobilize the domestic private sector. We have already a capital market uh, in South Africa that is quite active. Uh, in fact, uh, you have been able to issue uh, about $2.8 billion of uh, green bonds, That's, which means that there is appetite uh, to go there. And the idea would be how do we create the condition for the private sector to come and provide these resources. But that will not be uh, sufficient. Uh, it will be important indeed for the international community to come and support South Africa, uh, particularly because there is a global public good dimension uh, in terms of uh, decommissioning power plants, in terms of helping uh, the population, the concerned population, the employees to uh, reskill, uh, access to new activities, so that will indeed require international resources. And I believe, you know, I am speaking to you from COP, uh, the uh, South African leadership. Uh, has made a strong case uh, in, uh, here in uh, Sharm el Sheikh that the international community should come to support not just Africa, South Africa, but the continent as a whole. And we at the World Bank, we have started. You probably heard that we have mobilized uh, last week uh, 500 million US dollars to support uh, the first decommissioning of the Komati plant with a repurposing because one element is to close the old plant, but we need to bring new capacity and we are uh, providing support for that. But more importantly, we have an important component of about 47.5 uh, million US dollars to indeed do this uh, just condition to support the workers in their insertion, but also creating conditions for the new economic activities for the population around uh, the region of the uh, combat. So it will require effort from all parties coming together behind the South Africa plan that has been quite well articulated and presented here in Sharm el-Sheikh. If we don't transition as South Africa, what will happen? I mean, not just to the climate, but also to our economy. We wouldn't be able to export our cars, for example. 
So uh, can you repeat? Because if we, I if we, sure. If we mm -hmm. don't, if we do not transition, what will happen to South Africa? What will happen to our economy? Yeah, I think that South Africa needs to transition because the point that we are making is that, in addition to supporting, if you want, the global climate agenda. It is foremost in the interest of South Africa to adopt and implement this just energy transition. First, as you know, when you are in a period of blackout, scarcity of energy, a lot shedding, as you call it, and it costs the economy about 200 million US dollars per day. So we've made an estimate that it costs the economy 24 billion US dollars a year, when actually the needs that we have estimated are in the range of 17 billion US dollars. So implementing that, it is in interest of South Africa from that perspective, adding you know, capacity to meet uh, the needs of the, of the population, but also being more competitive, because as we will move, you will see that a number of countries with the definition of the uh, decarbonization will not uh, accept products that are high carbon intensive. So that will be also uh, an element uh, that will uh, affect the productivity and the competitiveness of South Africa. And more broadly, restoring its full competitiveness uh, will be a, a, a good element. In addition to the fact that uh, in doing so, you also need to increase access because we still have a lot between 15 and 20 percent of the population of South Africa that does not have access to energy. And usually it is the last mile where off-grid solution can be proposed. And that will be also another way of killing two birds with one stone, if I can put it this way, meaning using uh, low carbon energy and at the same time meeting the needs of these populations. Um do you believe that our government is, is committed to this? Do you believe that the South African government is properly committed to this change? I mean, we see our energy minister does talk a lot about coal. We know our president is committed to the change. Do you think our government is committed to the transition? Yeah, I believe that uh, there is uh, an emerging consensus around the need of doing the just energy transition. Uh, you know that uh, not long ago the cabinet has adopted a just transition framework that actually reinforces the point that in doing so we need to focus on the people. You have uh, the uh, implementation plan of the just energy transition that has been uh, finalized and submitted to a consultation by, by the people. And I think that it is what we are saying you know, in our climate report, it is a trajectory. We are not saying that there will not be any call to more and more. And in fact, South Africa has 80% of uh, its energy capacity that is coming from coal. So you won't, you won't expect to go from 80 to zero overnight. So I, I think that somehow, it looks like the various parties are saying we want to do it, but what is the pace of doing it? And our suggestion in the report 